Hey everyone, and welcome to the Button Tutorial Extended Edition Pro Plus Deluxe. Welcome to the second part of my button tutorial, where I will be giving these buttons functionality. For instance, today I'll be showing how to make a start button that actually starts a simple game, a pause button that pauses a game, and a mute button that cancels all the sounds whenever you're muted. This is like a continuation, kind of, of my last video, so make sure to check that out. I'll have it linked down below, and there'll be a little card thingy that pops up right here. If you're excited for today's episode, don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing. But anyway, let's get right into this tutorial tutorial. Okay, so this is where we left off last week. As you can see here, I have this button that looks really nice. I can hover over it and it makes a nice sound and it looks really smooth. And on top of that, I have a sprite called player, which just has some simple movement. When we click the green flag, it goes to zero, zero, it shows, and then it will change the X and Y by our inputs, which is WASD. And you can see that we can move around. Now, what I want to do is to where when we start, you can't move and it's just the start button here. Once you click on that start button, it will launch into the game and hide that start button then we'll be able to move and all the pause and mute buttons will pop up over here so let's go ahead and do that so really all we need to do to make this switch is to use broadcast instead of when green five clicked that way we can time when we want stuff to happen for instance let's make the title screen only work when we receive a message called title screen so pull out a when i receive message and now create a new message and name this title screen now if we go ahead and replace these when green five clicks with the title screen you can see that when we click the green flag the button no longer works but if we broadcast the title screen you can see that it starts working immediately so what we can do now is do when i receive title screen show and now when green flag clicked hide so now when we start the game it won't show but once we broadcast the title screen it'll pop up now let's just broadcast the title screen in the when green flag click because for this game i want to start right away and now you can see it starts right away now for the player all we want to do is switch this show to a hide on the when green flag click now the title screen starts and the player is not shown but you can see that if we go ahead and press WASD the position is actually moving so we don't want that to happen we want it to only be able to be moved if the game is started we want to go ahead and move the player off of the win green flag click and onto another win I receive so add a win I receive and now name this start game and now you can see click the green flag we can't move around and that's because this hasn't been broadcasted now we want to make sure we show this when we start the game and we hide it in the when green flag click so let's go ahead and test this out if we go ahead and try to move you can see that the position stays the same but if we broadcast start game the player pops up in the middle of the screen and we can move it around now let's make this automatically happen so all we need to do is inside the start button add an if statement and check if the mouse is down then we can broadcast the start game and wait so now you can see that when we click on the button it starts the game and we can move around now there is a little weird issue though is that the button stays in the middle of the screen so let's add a when I receive start game inside the button and go ahead and do a hide and then make sure you stop other scripts and sprites so it doesn't keep checking for the touching. So you can now see that once we click start, it'll start the game, hide the main menu, and look at that. We can move around and all that stuff. The reason that the separating the game into broadcast is so powerful is because it's not dependent on what order we do it in. Say in the beginning, we take out this broadcast. As you can see, nothing happens. Maybe we put that in there and change it to start game. You can see that now when we click the green flag, it just just skips the title screen. Okay, so now that we have that, let's add a pause button. So I'll make a sprite called pause, and within it, I'll have two costumes, one called pause and one called play. Now you could make this all one sprite and name it whatever, like buttons, and then create clones, but for the simplicity of this tutorial, I'm going to split all the buttons into different sprites. Now in the pause, let's go ahead and pull in all the scripts from the start into there. Okay, now you can go ahead and remove this one, because I don't really care about that effect, and remove this, and remove that. And now now we want to go ahead and change this to a broadcast start game and now remove this in the mouse down and I'll go ahead and remove these two because I don't care about that fancy algorithm. Then let's go ahead and position this. So if I go ahead and click the show button, as you can see the position 220, 160 it looks really great. So I'll make sure to set the position there when we start the game. So now with all the broadcast set up, it hides in the beginning and when we click start, there we go, it pops up up top and I can hover over it and it looks nice. Now let's just make some variables to keep track of the, if the game is paused or not. To make it for 
overall sprite variable called game pause. Now in the when I receive start game, simply set that is pause to false because we don't want to start pause. Now in the if mouse down, let's just check if game paused is equal to false. So if we are not paused then and we click on it, then we want to set the is paused to true. So that way it flips it. Otherwise, we can just set it to false. So that way we'll go back and forth. So if we start this up and show the game paused, it will start at zero and it sets it to false. And we click on this. It's going really fast for some reason if we hold down. Now, the reason for that is we don't wait until we are not pressing the button. So at the very end, let's go ahead and wait until not mouse down. Now you can see once we start the game, it starts at false. And if we click on it, it'll switch to true. And then we click on again, it'll be false. And it just flips back and forth the more we click on. So now let's make it switch to the right costume. So in the beginning, let's switch costume to pause because that's this button. In this loop, we want it to switch costume to play and this one to pause. And now we can hide the game pause. You can see now it's just that normal one, but then once we click it, it'll switch to the play one and then vice versa back and forth. Now that actually doesn't do anything because you can see when we pause it, we can still move around. So here's how you'd make your game actually pause when that variable is paused. Anything you want to not happen when it's paused, just need to add an if statement checking if game pause is equal to false. So basically what that means is this code right here will only run if the game is not paused. So now you can see that we can move around like normal, but if I click that pause button, I'm pressing the WASD and it won't let me move. Now if I unpause it, here we go, I can move again. Now let's do a similar thing for the mute button. So of course, just like the pause button, you'll need a sprite called mute. And like I said earlier, you could make these clones and stuff, but I'm going to keep it into sprites for this tutorial. And I have two costumes, one called mute and one called unmute. And these are just really bad and simple icons that represent the button. So this script is going to be very similar to the pause button. So click on the pause and pull all the scripts into mute. Now we want to go ahead and change the position to 130. So it's slightly down. And then we want to switch cost into mute in the beginning, unmute right here and then mute right here. And then we want to go ahead and switch all the game pause to a new variable called game muted. So in the beginning, set the game muted to false, check if the game muted is equal to false, set the game muted to true, and then set the game muted to false. So now you can see that when we start, the game muted is false, and when we click on it, it's true, and it switches to the muted thingy. Then when we click on it, it's false, and it switches back, and we can toggle that on and off. Okay, so now how would you actually use that functionality you just created? So I'm gonna make a really quick script that makes the game play the pop sound whenever you click. Okay, so I made this little script and whenever we click, it makes a little pop sound. But if we go ahead and click the mute button and then click, we can still hear the pop. So all you need to do is do the same thing you did for the movement stuff, but just make sure that you change it to game muted. So if the game muted is false, then we can do that. If you want to clean it up, you can do an and instead of the two ifs here. So now you can see that when the game is not muted and we can click and it makes a sound, but when we mute it and then click, it does absolutely nothing. And then one last issue is if we pause the game and click, you can still hear the pop. So we'd probably add another condition inside the player and check if the game muted equal to false and the game paused is equal to false and the mouse is down. So now you can see that we can click normally but if it's paused we can't make the sound or if we unpause it and mute it we also can't make the sound but if we are not paused and we're not muted then we can make the pop sound. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode on giving your buttons functionality and showing how to kind of use them in your games. If this helped you out, make sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing and drop a comment down below. But anyway, this has been Owen and I am out.